So we really felt like we had to be building this on the right underlying material. And that's what we went about creating. It's called a topological superconductor or topo conductor for short. And this is something that people have hypothesized for decades. And, but no one had really reliably created this in the laboratory or been able to harness it for quantum information processing. This property of, of, of being able to accommodate equally well an even or odd number of electrons is, is really the special property of a topo conductor. And it's also why it's such a great qubit. Because the thing that you are using as your, your qubit, you know, your degree, your, 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 your register, your zero or one is even or oddness. the qubit is small you know it's less than 10 micron by 10 micron a side and a lot of qubits really are quite a bit larger for one reason or another usually having to do with the with, with the trying to make them stable but you know interestingly they're also not too small because too small is also a problem because when they're too small it's actually hard to get all the wiring in there to do all the control so we really hit a, a goldilocks you know scale where they're not too small that you can't do anything with them but they're not large that you end up needing a warehouse to make a to make a useful quantum computer. there's two axes. One is we're making more complex devices. So we have, uh, you know, our, our first QPU, Majorana 1, you know, with a, with a topo core. We are now making, you know, making more complex devices. You know, we have one qubit, an eight qubit device, and then we're looking at, you know, devices with more qubits. More complexity gives you the ability to, you know, do, do richer computations. Heading towards, you know, towards and beyond error correction.